In the late 1970s, something truly amazing began to happen in the crop-rich countryside of England. Reports of circles being pressed into standing crops began to trickle in from the agricultural areas where much of England's cereal grains are grown. What are these mysterious and stunning shapes etched into the wheat fields of England and other nations around the world? Are these crop circles, as they've come to be known, some sort of communication? Communication, perhaps, from another world. Some believe these intricate patterns could be a warning, but warning of what and from whom? There are scientists who tell us that mathematics is the language of the universe. Could it be that these precise geometric designs are, in fact, trying to tell us something? They were just simple circles to begin with, but as the frequency of the reports increased, so did the size and intricacy of the markings in the field. What's more, in spite of the fact that some of these circles were so large they could only be fully viewed from high in the air, they had the disturbing quality of appearing, fully formed, overnight. Who or what could noiselessly and in the dark cut huge images into a field of living grain without damaging the crop and leave a precise geometric impression only fully visible from an airplane? There were many people who thought that question was being answered by other reports that began coming in at about the same time. Reports of silvery disks flying or hovering low over the open countryside and apparently these objects were seen in great numbers. The town of Warminster has gained the reputation as the UFO capital of England. The sheer number of sightings in that area since 1964 has been nothing short of staggering. One particular phenomenon we've been watching with interest has been the sightings of a spherical object that seems to glow amber, orange or gold. There have been quite a number of sightings of that kind of this object. But those sightings were often only the beginning of the mystery. According to eyewitness accounts, with the first rays of the next morning's sun came astonishing evidence of the previous night's encounter with the unknown and so far unexplained. Someone or something left an area of the field flattened, pressed down into perfect geometric shapes. The crops are not cut, they're not broken. They've been carefully and systematically swirled flat to the ground. Over the years, these patterns have proven to be more than just random design. They are, in fact, perfect circles, ovals, or circles with rings, and sometimes circles, rings, and satellites. So, we are left with the haunting possibility that if there is a connection between the circular objects and the mysterious imprints left in the fields, these so-called crop circles may be the most positive evidence yet of alien visitors to our planet. But can we be sure the crop circles and UFOs are related? Almost from the beginning, uh, crop circles have appeared uh, in association with the report of aerial phenomena. In the most extreme cases, uh, people have reported uh, beams of light touching ground level, where crop circles have been later discovered, or indeed in many cases, the little balls of orange light uh, dancing over the field and on, on occasions literally appearing in the fields. Uh, these sightings have often been um, followed by discoveries of the crop circles. This is, of course, important circumstantial evidence of a connection between the crop markings and the aerial phenomena, but it is only circumstantial. Are there other reasons to believe these symbols in the field were made by UFOs? The characteristics of the crop circles, the bent stems, uh, and the lack of damage, the, uh, the idea that they've been produced by some kind of scanner, which we haven't got, which I discovered from my uh, research, and the fact that their timings related to the UFO activity all point to an intelligence which is not human. Could it be that the answer will be found in sites like these, where witnesses claim UFOs have landed? There have been a number of ground traces that have been found both here in Pennsylvania and throughout the world. Some of these traces indicate uh, circular areas, ring-shaped areas, ovals, irregular sites. In some cases, you have the top of the area that's been burnt and charred. In some cases, soil or plant life has been removed. J. Allen Hynek, the father of modern UFO research, reported witnessing a flying saucer landing site in Canada 
as though on a signal all five of these objects rose straight up as though on a signal and where each one had been was a nine-foot circle of matted down grass. Does this mean that all such strange circles in the grass have been created by a UFO? Or is there another more likely explanation that would describe all of these phenomena? The official explanation from the British government is that these crop circles are actually formed by the wind. Well, presumably we are led to believe that uh, this is a rigorous wind system which uh, etches the crop circles into the fields. The British government's whirlwind theory uh, appears to have been accepted uh, by everybody concerned, uh, particularly, I think, the uh, public, uh, but bearing in mind uh, that it in no way fulfills the mechanism which actually forms a whirlwind, i.e. they are formed by thermal inductance uh, and appear during the daylight and or in the lee of a hill. In southern England, we have very few hills and most of the crop circles appear at night. They simply started 20-odd years ago. Mother Nature is not best known for inventing new phenomena. The wind damage is, is very obvious. It's, it's just a, a very random falling of the crop in the fields. There's no particular structure to it. In the um, genuine ones, the geometry is awesome. They may be a 1,000 foot in diameter, it's absolutely flawless. It is hugely accurate. Wind, however, is not the only weather factor that has been suggested as a natural cause for the formation of crop circles. The BLT research team incorporated a group of scientists headquartered in the U.S., but doing research worldwide on this phenomenon has a slightly different idea. The most uh, reasonable hypothesis that we've been able to come up with is that an atmospheric plasma, uh, an air mass of highly charged electrical particles, is descending down towards the Earth's surface, and when it impacts in a crop field, what you get is, in fact, a crop circle. A lightning discharge is another example of a plasma form. The northern lights are another one. Science until recently did not think that plasmas came down as low as the Earth's actual surface, but not too many years ago they discovered sprites, and sprites occur at six miles up. So there's more and more evidence that perhaps plasmas can in fact impact the Earth's surface. So are we to believe that uh, a whirlwind, a wind of any kind, can form a pattern like this? Look at the way the grain is being woven and these uh, precisely well-deformed edges. Well, no whirlwinds did, did these things, and it's absolute madness to pretend they did. The sheer number of circles being reported every year has forced many governments to take note of these amazing occurrences. But what have governments, by and large, done to identify the source of the circles? Could it be the entire phenomenon has been the result of clever fakery? And since no one appears to be gaining great fame and fortune for their effort, why would anyone bother to do it? No one denies that the artistry and geometric precision of the crop circles are truly amazing. The answer that seems to elude every question is, how on earth can it be done on such a grand scale, in so many different places, and always in a single night? Does this mean that UFOs, piloted by some sort of intelligence, are the only answer? Actually, there are a variety of other theories about where the crop markings come from. One of the most inventive explanations suggests the markings are being made by the satellite-based weapon system developed for the American Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI. There is a theory that the, uh, that the SDI program, the government themselves, are actually employing high-tech equipment in space to etch into the fields of southern England and other parts of the world patterns of this kind. There are two reasons why I don't believe it's even a starter. We had reports of this phenomena in 1946 in the same field as we have them today. We didn't have the technology up there when they were first appearing. And the second, I think the most major point, is that these patterns um, could be laid into the fields of secure areas of military establishments. We have large areas in central southern England. It'd be very simple to lay them in those areas. But these are appearing in public areas some of them are actually crossing major highways. I cannot begin to conceive of any Western uh, government employing such technology in such an irresponsible manner. 
There are even those who have the, put the theory forward that these things are formed by mating hedgehogs or porcupines rolling around in the field. Are any of these theories any more credible than the suggestion that the crop circles are formed by UFOs or some kind of aerial technology? Of course, all of them overlook a much simpler possibility. Could these patterns just be a matter of an outright hoax? In 1990, two Englishmen came forward with a confession. They had, they told the world, personally created the crop circles. The men, Doug Bauer and David Chorley, were even eager to demonstrate their technique for cameras. Their method was simplicity itself. Put a board under one foot, attach to a rope to hold it against your foot, tie yourself to a center point and begin walking around in circles. Nothing to it. But if Doug and Dave did do all of the crop circles as they claimed, how did they get from England to America to Russia and back? How did they make as many as 15 circles in one night? How did they overlap the stalks without breaking them? If indeed this is the answer to the origin of the crop circles, how on earth did they do it? Remember in the fall of 1991 when these two gentlemen in southern England were trotted out on the world media as the explanation for the crop circle mystery? Two guys who claim they did it all. And for some reason, the worldwide network media accepted that as an explanation. According to them, they had boards which they pushed down across the grain. And they just kept walking around in circles or rings or whatever until they'd made the shapes they wanted. The whole thing was a, all a big practical joke. In 1991, um, Doug and Dave broke the story to the world that they had claimed all the crop circles and that they had invented, as it were, the subject. Um, but when you actually interview them, and I interviewed them myself on a couple of occasions, the answers don't necessarily tally up correctly. Um, so I think their story was embellished somewhat, but it's also puzzling that the media just went for it completely and it was, you know, sort of mystery ended as it were, um, so, which I don't, don't believe all their claims. There simply is no way that just a, two p men uh, could have possibly constructed all of these patterns appearing on occasions 15 per day without getting caught at it. If hoaxers went out during the middle of the night just to make this, how on earth would they have possibly constructed a pattern like Barbary Castle during the shortest night of the British summer? It would have taken a team of ho hoaxers days to have constructed this, and it appeared simply overnight. Oh, crop circles like UFOs are a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, the US and Canada, Australia, Japan, they're all over the place. I heard some of reports about them in the Soviet Union as well, in the former Soviet Union. They're a worldwide phenomenon, and the idea that two old English barflies are flying all over the world creating these things is, is patently ridiculous. And there's another aspect of the circles that suggests, shall we say, more comprehensive planning. Many crop circle experts say that the markings in the fields are perfect geometric figures, often accurate to less than a quarter of an inch. My studies uh, of crop circles, of small, genuine crop circles, indicated to me that they had been produced very precisely, mathematically, and that they could not have been produced naturally. Well, we're getting uh, designs that uh, for the last 12 years or so would be of sufficient interest uh, to feature in, say, a, a school maths lesson. I feel that uh, there's a holistic geometry appearing in the uh, English uh, crop circle designs uh, that uh, shows us a different experience of mathematics. I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the circle makers are possibly uh, more intelligent than, than human scientists in that we found a lot of mathematics and symbolism in the circles that have helped expand our existing knowledge of science. Um, I've spoken to mathematicians that have looked at circles, analysed the um, shapes and actually brought new theories and um, new branches of physics and maths that are almost an expansion on what we already know. Yet is it not possible that all of the crop markings really are hoaxes? Even if Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley didn't make all of the circles, might not the real culprit be hundreds of hoaxers all over the world? People that believe crop circles were made by human beings are overlooking some very important features of the crop circles. They are interwoven uh, and intricately laid, uh, not at all the way that they would be crushed to the ground if people stamped them. Chemical analysis of grain from a field where a crop circle had appeared suggests another change that no human hands could have made.
crop samples from formations in England, New York State, and Vancouver, British Columbia were subjected to some kind of energy which rapidly heated the plants. Even more puzzling are the soil changes in a large oval shape found August 1st near Beckhampton, England. Analysis by nuclear systems designer Marshall Dudley and Duke University student Michael Karost revealed the presence of 10 unusual and short-lived radionuclides in the samples that are not found in normal plants. These are not naturally occurring radionuclides. They must be synthesized in either cyclotrons or fusion reactors. Dudley and Karost said, finding such isotopes in soil samples from a rural England field is profoundly surprising. In 1993, shortly after the Perseid meteor shower, a formation occurred in Wiltshire, England, at a place called Chur Hill. The formation had a glaze or a coating on some of the plants and some of the tiny swirls. What we discovered was that this was absolutely pure iron, and we realized that what we were looking at was a deposit of probably meteoritic dust. Since then, we have begun looking in the soils very aggressively, and we find multiple cases, in fact, the majority of cases, where we have 50 to 100 micron diameter beads. These are tiny little spheres of pure iron deposited inside the crop circles and not outside. Every plant on Earth has a distinctive energy pattern, and we have looked closely and compared the energy pattern of plants inside the crop circle with those outside as controls in the general area. And uh, this was a non-conventional uh, plant analysis uh, process, but they nonetheless uh, secured a starch crystal uh, from a single plant inside a single crop circle and discovered that looking through a microscope, the lattice structure uh, was very different to anything they had ever seen before. Most people think that applying science to mysteries will dispel them. In this case, it's making it a better mystery than it was to begin with. Applying science to crop circle research is not attempted by everyone, but in the case of the BLT research team, it is their primary focus. The way the work is done is that we take um, many hundreds of samples inside the crop circles and an equal number or slightly less control samples outside. Uh, we then compare the two groups of plants to see what we see. What we find are enlarged cell wall pits in the crop circle plants, uh, a lengthened nodes, markedly lengthened, sometimes 200 and some percent over the control nodes. Uh, we find holes blown out at the nodes, which we never see in the standing crop outside. And we also get germination abnormalities. If the crop markings do form mathematically precise geometric symbols, and if the plants inside have been laid in extremely complex patterns, and the organic structure of the plant has been chemically altered, have we finally found indisputable evidence of some superhuman force at work? Or are there other scientific data to suggest a more terrestrial and less extraterrestrial explanation? And what, if anything, is the official government, or should we say, government's reaction to all of this? In 1972, in a wheat field near Warminster, England, two men encountered what would become a worldwide mystery unexplained to this day. They said they saw wheat being forced down in a clockwise direction by some force they couldn't see. Later, a simple, elegant circle some 30 feet in diameter was found in the pressed wheat plants. Now, nearly three decades and more than 9,000 formations later, crop circles have grown into complex mathematical fractals in lengths up to three quarters of a mile, and they can be found in most countries around the globe. But along with this amazing growth in numbers and size of crop circles has come a corresponding growth in the number of admitted hoaxers, aided and abetted in some instances by major American and British TV networks. In one notable instance, a crop circle contest was held, sponsored by The Guardian, Germany's PM magazine, and under the direction of Dr. Robert Sheldrake. Experts were called in from among the various crop circle study groups to judge the final product of the participants. A winner was chosen and given an appropriate prize. Does this prove then that the circles are in fact the work of hoaxers? If I gave you a $20 bill and I convinced you that it was hoaxed, would you thereafter refuse ever to accept a $20 bill? Does this invalidate the whole of the US currency? 
They are a paranormal phenomenon. When you step into a crop circle, you realise that you cannot explain what is making this. It's uh, some sort of force is able to uh, twirl the wheat and it's quite different from a man-made phenomenon. You, you realise that uh, and there's no substitute for really being in the field and, and seeing that. How, for example, could the contest judges have evaluated those things scientists say could not be hoaxed? Many experts investigating the crop circle sites have detected evidence of intense microwave radiation not present in ordinary fields. Could it be that our increased use of microwave technology has somehow affected standing crops? After all, currently we use microwaves in applications ranging from cooking to telecommunications. Is it not possible that by some strange set of circumstances, microwaves such as those used for carrying telephone messages could have somehow struck the ground instead of their receiving station? This would account for the silent and instantaneous arrival of the crop circle. If that, or some other man-made circumstance is possible, can we now assume that UFOs are not necessarily involved in the crop circle phenomenon? And if we do, can we also dismiss photographs such as this? Hundreds of eyewitnesses have seen objects such as this in close proximity to crop circles or near a place where a crop circle would later be found. Well, I arrived at a, at a field overlooking um, a wheat field, in fact, where there was a major crop circle at a place called Alton Barnes, very close to Stonehenge in England. There were eight of us, uh, scientists and engineers, some of whom are employed by the uh, US government here. And uh, what happened, uh, at great surprise, out of absolutely nowhere, uh, swooped a large uh, British military army helicopter. Uh, bristling with technology, as of course many of them of course are. Uh, but he came in very, very close to us. We had no idea what he was up to at the time. Uh, we thought maybe initially that he was taking photographs of the crop circles that were already there. But he came to within, I would estimate, 40 feet of our heads, and there was nothing short, I mean, it was nothing short of harassment. I think there was a major attempt to move us out of that area. I had no idea why they would want to do that, because I've lived there for 48 years. As if one wasn't enough, and the downdraft literally was pushing the hedge row alongside onto our vehicle, a second one uh, swooped in behind him. These army helicopters were pushing us, attempting to push us out of the area. As we moved up the highway, as a public highway close to this field, they followed us behind the hedge row. But then we stopped, and uh, one of them moved away rapidly from us over the top of this large pattern and moved up to approach a small sphere of light pulsing. I would estimate it was probably 18 inches or so in diameter, pulsing, uh, and the helicopter came right up to it. it. It couldn't possibly have missed seeing it, and in one frame of the film has simply disappeared and is now behind the helicopter. The helicopter appears to uh, maneuver itself on its own axis to get a better view of this because it's been now behind it. The second helicopter is uh, in touch, of course, by radio control, uh, by radio communications, and is being told to back his helicopter up as opposed to turn it. You can see he changes his mind and reverses his helicopter until this ball of light is now right in front of him again. And it simply disappears. Uh, with that, they hung around the area for just a few more minutes, and both of them uh, made, made away. Um, it, it is obviously an assumption. If I were pushed hard on what I thought they were doing, I would be, I think, forced to say that it seemed as if we were unwelcome. We had walked into uh, an area where they were already engaged in something in involving this very small ball of light which we have not only been reported, had reported to us many times by people in that area. Two major patterns were already in the field, and the following day, a, a number of more uh, major patterns appeared in that same area. What is it that the government of the United States knows and wants to keep us, the public, at a complete arm's length distance from? If they have an understanding 
of what type or types of non-human intelligence are interacting with our planet. I'm nervous about the fact that they have kept a policy of silence, disinformation, and ridicule on phenomena that they themselves have been studying intimately for 50 years. Since the beginning of the 90s, the overnight appearance of crop markings has increased exponentially. Scarcely a day goes by that a new formation is not reported somewhere in the world. Even more amazing have been the changes in the patterns, from simple circles and rings to markings that are, with each new report, growing in size and complexity. More importantly, the phenomenon has shown intelligent reaction to the theories of the researchers. When it was said freak winds on hillsides caused the circles, the crop circles moved to flat, open areas. When men armed with planks of wood were suggested as the culprits, circles developed in canola, one of the most brittle plants possible. If balloons were said to have been the means of making the circles, they would suddenly appear directly beneath high voltage wires. At the height of the hoaxing, an American tourist etched out huge letters on the side of a hill, talk to us. The answer came back a few days later when a most bizarre looking formation resembling Hebrew script appeared at Milk Hill. The Milk Hill script is unusual as a crop circle, uh, primarily because it doesn't look like a crop circle. It's actually the closest that uh, the circle makers have actually used to a significant language form that we can recognize. Now this language form uh, was actually analyzed by 12 um, scientists uh, using 40,000 different permutations or words and using every conceivable language known to mankind. What they finally came up with was uh, two words that were written in a very unusual form of Latin and also written in the fields in a Freemasonic script. This is a special alphabet that was designed by the Freemasons as a form of communication uh, at least eight, uh, eight centuries ago. Uh, the meaning of these um, glyphs was uh, that they actually came up as two different words, and the words read apono astos, which translated into English means we are opposed to cunning and deceit. Now this is very significant because at the time that Milk Hill script appeared, it was, it was 1992, this was at the height of the hoaxing just after Doug and Dave manifested uh, through the media. So it's quite a, a significant message considering the time in which it came. There is no doubt in my mind that the crop circle makers are remarkably intelligent. I've been teaching geometry, architecture, and design for my whole professional life. And the markings I see in the crops embody a wisdom and understanding and a skill beyond my wildest imaginings. We are getting levels of inventiveness and continuing creativity, which I believe is beyond human capacity. But if these images are being created by visitors from other planets, it represents major change. It has always been the assumption that these visitors wanted to keep out of sight. Now they are deliberately leaving their fingerprints all over the crime scene. Why? Why would visitors from another world suddenly want us to know of their presence here? Is this all evidence that someone is trying to communicate with us? If communication is the goal, what is the message? And if there is a clearly identifiable message, where does it come from? And what does it mean to you and me, to our future, the future of the world? After thousands of crop markings around the world and nearly 30 years of serious research, the crop circles are still a mystery.